there's a lot of conversation here and generally speaking about the post cookie world right and the dramatic impact that's having on publishers it will have on publishers um, and sort of the diminished interest perhaps by buyers so as one of the biggest buyers in the world how do you see the post cookie world and what are those opportunities are they are they good? Are they bad? Uh, what are you expecting from vendors and what are you expecting from the publishers? Right. So I think there's a, um, a bunch of macro topics around this and then a bunch of micro topics of things that we can kind of take advantage of now. Um, so if you take a step back, right, there's been a lot of change in the industry um, uh, because of the focus on data and privacy, right? So Apple making the changes with Safari, Google making the changes um, on the Google ID deprecation, right? And overall, what it means is it actually makes um, the walled garden stronger because they have identity, right? Because they have um, all of the, that PII and it's worse for the rest of the publishers, like the rest of the ecosystem. <laughs> Um, so there definitely needs to be this rise of a universal ID, right? Whether it's through Live Ramp Consortium or a number of other methods, um, I think that is one uh, piece that has to happen. I think there's a bunch of little um, opportunities that uh, marketers can be taking advantage of now, right? Um, one thing we've seen, just looking at data from January to July, is um, bid rates have plummeted on Safari month over month. And so we see on the same publisher premium inventory, like 50% cheaper prices for that same quality inventory. So um, we've deployed some tactics to take advantage of those kind of market inefficiencies of planning against audience um, on a premium publisher in Chrome, but then buying it in Safari in Chrome. So getting some of those pricing advantages. So there's little things you can do um, kind of taking advantage of this, this um, place we're in right now. But then marketers really have to um, make larger changes to adapt to this, right? So one thing is I think there was this vision of having all of your data in one place, like one DMP, one customer database, um, and that's no longer uh, going to be a thing, right? So the, the, uh, as soon as you can accept that, the better, right? You have different clean rooms, the Facebook Advanced Analytics clean room, the Amazon clean room, Google's ADH Ads Data Hub clean room. Um, you have to be very good at working in those environments and realize that your data is going to be in these different places. Um, and isn't this one panacea of a DMP where you can bring um, all of the, the data within that environment? Right? And you have to think about um, how are you going to change your measurement. Right? So a lot of people were relying on the DCM log files, which the Google ID has gone away in Europe. It'll go away soon here. Um, so ensuring that you have the right kind of plan around that, right? And um, measurement framework, right, isn't simple. You have media mix, you have MTA, are you going to use ADH, right? There's a lot of different um, things to think about there, but you need to be covered from a measurement framework. And then all of the technology providers that you, or technology platforms you work with, um, you need to have different integration plans. So. Um, as you grow your first party data, right, that actually has to be for all brands. And I think for all the brands we see, it is a critical part of their strategy, is it growing and maintaining their first party data. There needs to be integration plans of how do you kind of mitigate the risk of these changes in this post um, third party cookie world with all of those providers of how are you integrating that first party data. Uh, so there's kind of a lot of, a lot of pieces from that. I, uh, I actually think if you take a step back um, if you think of the macro problem, right, like do consumers really understand that by going on the internet they are giving some type of passive consent? Um, I think the answer is no. Um, I had an argument with a family member recently who was like, I pay $80 a month for internet, why do I have to see ads? Like completely misunderstanding the, the um, fact that the way the internet works is um, ads are how uh, publishers are compensated, right? So uh, I think that consumer education uh, needs to happen. And I think it is starting to happen with regulation, right? It, with GDPR, consumers are starting to um, like actually have to opt in and understand. I think where that evolves is uh, consumers having um, compensation consent or choices around um, is it an ad or is it a, a payment, right? So I think we'll, we'll see an evolution around that because the ad model um, and having an only ad model has not been a great, uh, has had a lot of negative side effects and unintended consequences, right? It um, puts perverse incentives in place for publishers who then just are trying to drive more eyeballs, um, create 
clickbait, not really focusing on editorial integrity. Um, it's created uh, app addiction, right? A lot of apps are just focused on having people spend more time. So in spending more, to um, spending more time on that app, like society is getting addicted to phones. Um, so I think moving to a world, and I don't see kind of another way. I think there was a great panel that Ben Barakas talked about, you know, the work SourcePoint is doing to um, push this evolution. Um, I don't see a, a world where you're not, uh, the consumers can continue to not understand this model um, as they do today. It has to move to more understanding and then eventually choice. I think it's important that clients own their own data, their first party data, and are building up and maintaining their own first party data, right? We do, um, uh, Analect uh, has uh, capabilities within Omni where they have an agile ID and we can leverage our graph. Um, but a big part of the role um, we're playing is um, consulting, right? Uh, we have a marketing tech consulting team where we're working with clients on um, how do you, what does that environment look like? What are the different tech integrations look like? How can we help with tech um, and data connectivity between all of the technology providers? Um, can we deploy and set up and, ma and maintain your consumer data platform, your mobile reporting platform, right? Your analytics platform. So. I think um, it's in a supporting and consulting manner as more and more uh, clients, uh, well, clients should be owning their own first, first party data. This sort of regulatory tsunami that some are predicting, yeah. uh, w how do you see that and how would that impact things? So I think this regulatory, um, uh, I think the implications will actually be good for the ecosystem. Um, I think there needs to be an evolution where consumers have an understanding um, and of the choice that they're making and the subsequent use of that data. Uh, so I think we will see that with the evolution of consent management platforms, um, where first it goes from like lack of understanding to understanding to eventually having choice. So um, I ultimately think this is something that needs to happen, right? I, it, it's not great that it's happening at different state levels and in different ways, but I ultimately think we'll, we'll get to the right place.